Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. Here to present, make fast profits, trading 30 minutes a day, is Miss Melissa Armo of the Stock Swoosh. Welcome back to Trader's Corner, Melissa. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you. You sound a little far away, though. Let me move my mic closer. Can you hear me now? Much, much better. <laughs> I'm too far away from my my pile of papers on my desk, so. <laughs> Mine probably looks similar, if not worse. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. Welcome, everyone, and good afternoon. What a lovely day here, and uh, definitely an interesting time to trade. So, you know, just going right into the segment from the previous guest, who was talking about doing fast trades, really in this type of environment where the market is in a very, very tight range, which it's been really for the last 16, 17 days, but really almost since last fall, the market's been in a range. It's just widened and, and closed off even more recently. The best way to make money is to get in out of trades fast. So again, the longer you're in a trade, the more that you're at risk. At risk for what? For the possibility of a positive trade going to turn into a not a positive trade where you break even or it could even turn into a loss or a trade that you're up in and you think is gonna work then turns against you. So we're in a very, very, very interesting time where the market is hanging on by a thread based on every single solitary thing that the Fed says. So next week, the Fed is a meeting and they're probably gonna increase interest rates. Even though people think this is the wrong thing to do, they're probably gonna bump up rates another another quarter point point in May. And so how will the market react to that? Well, it's going to be just more than them raising rates or not raising rates. It's going to be really listening to every single solitary word that Jerome Powell says. Are they going to continue raising rates? Are they going to back off towards the end of the year? So it's an interesting time to trade. For me, what I do, though, I focus on stocks that gap. And we're going to talk about some examples here today. If you have any questions, you can plop them in the room. I can see them as we go along. And because I do gaps, I'm looking to trade basically the first 30 minutes of the day into the open, in and out between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. If you have any questions for me, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Skype. And I try to always put any TV hits or showing where I'm going to be on on Skype. I was just on uh, recently on Newsmax talking about the banks that are falling apart, some of the banks that collapse and of course there's First Republic now is in danger of collapsing and that stock has absolutely tanked in the last couple of days if you've been watching that as well. And sometimes, sometimes it's dangerous to trade stocks like that because it was halted several times. I think it was about two days ago it was halted and you've gotta be careful. I say stay away from things that are that volatile. Well, I love to trade volatility. You wanna trade something where you can make sure that you can get in and get out. And when stocks get halted, that can be very dangerous. But again, another telltale sign of showing what's really going on in this market. And you say, well, what can you really do to make money? Long-term investing, while many people are interested in it, and it's paid off, so particularly in years like 2021, where the market was extremely bullish, and really after the 2020 election, where the market rallied even after COVID. The fact is, though, that times are different now. If you're looking for retirement and long-term investing, that's not what active trading is. Active trading is you are in and out quick, you were chunking it out, and you were trying to make money as fast as you can in booking it. It could be $100 a day, it could be $500 a day, it could be $1,000 a day. It depends what type of stocks that you're trading, and it also depends on the size of your account and your risk. So I put in here so far this year, I forgot to add in last week's, but this is year to date through the 14th of our stats for the day trades in the live room. This is with an average risk of $2,800 per train. And again, I run a live trading room where I call the trades, the entry, the stop, and the exit. We're on pace this year. Again, this doesn't include the last week to make uh, quite a bit of money this year with a risk of a little bit under $3,000 per trade. Now, these are all trades on margin. Most of them are shorts. I'm mostly short, which we'll talk about today. Some of them are longs, but again, I prefer to short. So we're gonna talk a lot today about shorting. And the reason I like to short over going long is because again, I like to do the fast trades and panic comes in fast. Stocks sell off faster than they rally, okay? So we're up 185,435 for the year so far in the day trades and we're just moving forward and we're gonna just keep chugging along here. You know, the thing is that we're four months into the year. Next week is May, actually Monday is May 1st. And if you're not on target for the year, or if you don't even have a plan of action for what you're gonna do for 2023, or if you're behind, you're actually behind on your monetary goals for the year, 
then you have to kind of take a step back and regroup, okay? So the best thing that you can do for yourself is say, okay, can I really make money in the market? What is my belief system? Because a lot of times people have a negative belief system and they keep trading and they keep risking money in the market, but they really don't believe that they can make it. They actually think the market's rigged, okay? The reality is that the market isn't rigged against you. There are big players in the market that have a lot of money and they control the market and they control stocks. If you learn how to trade with them, you will be successful because fighting them is a losing battle. So the fact is you can make real money in the market. I'm doing it, I'm teaching people to do it now for 10 years going on 11. But if, you are, if your mentality, really if your mindset is such that you don't believe it, you're working against yourself. You're working against yourself and so is everyone else in the market. Because when you go into a stock and you take a trade, you're trying to take money away from somebody else. So you already have people out to get you the second you take a trade every single day. Because if you're shorting something, somebody else is going long. And you wanna make sure you're in the right direction. So assess and look at yourself in the mirror, your real belief system about making money in the market and being successful. I always believe that I could be successful doing this. Even though when I started out, when I started trading in 2008, I was not successful. It took me three years to figure out my system, but I always believed that I would be successful. And it really didn't make any sense to me why I couldn't figure this out in two months, three months, six months. It took me longer than I thought, but I am so glad that I did it. And it may be taking you longer than you think, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it, okay? Because remember, if you give up, guess what? You're never gonna make it. You wanna guarantee in this business? You wanna guarantee in life? You wanna guarantee in the market or your trades or anything? I guarantee you one thing. If you quit, you definitely will not make it. So guess what? Don't quit. Keep going. You gotta keep figuring out and a positive attitude really helps. What also helps? You gotta get serious about it. You gotta get serious about trading. You gotta get serious about what you're doing. You have to get serious about what you're risking money in. Again, a lot of times right now with this market, people are going long and going short the same stock, the same day, the same hour. That's zero conviction, 0% 0 conviction. You have no conviction in anything whatsoever at all if you're doing that. You have to take it seriously. Take a class before you trade. Practice what you're doing. Practice small size before you take bigger positions. You need consistency and you also need commitment and you just can't be all over the place if you wanna be successful. So for me, I always focus on gaps. I only do my system, and I also mostly go to the short side, okay? So my focus is mostly, mostly to the short side. But there are billions and billions and billions in the market. So the very idea, when you think about it, the philosophy, the point of it, that you can make money, the answer is yes, you can. So it's really about the system that you're using, and it's very important to use a system that is consistently profitable in any market conditions, whether it's bullish, whether it's bearish, whether it's choppy, whether it's sideways. The success or failure of whatever you do really has a lot to do with the quality of your system. And unfortunately, not a lot of people have systems that are training. And then there's a lot of people that have systems that are just not any good. They may work in one market, but they may not work in another market condition. So you may make money for, for a couple of weeks or a couple of months and then it may stop working forever and never work again. So you've got to find something consistently. For me, GAPS has worked now for 15 years. So I've never done anything else and I never will do anything else because ultimately the reason, the crux of the philosophy of what I'm doing is I'm looking for institutional money, okay? So I'm going with the control. I'm looking at taking a position, okay? And I'm looking at getting in something that is being bought by institutional money or that is being sold off or shorted by institutional money. There is only ever one person in charge of any stock or anything on any one given day, period. That's it. Only one. Okay. There's only one direction that anything can be at any given time. And it's the control. And it's the control of what? It's the control of the money. You have to be able to spot that, find it, see it, and then you have to go with it. Okay. So I developed a system which is called the Golden Gap, which is a 26 point rating system as a checklist that I do every single morning before I get in any trade at all, before the open, before I even open my trading room, I rate gaps in the morning and I rate as many as I see, as many as I like. Again, I tend to go to the short side first. We did do Microsoft, we did calls on Microsoft. We got in them yesterday, they went today. It was a really nice call. I do do options and day trades. We'll talk about a little bit of options here too. Uh, but the big play we did really in the last two weeks was Tesla. We did like pretty much every trade that we did in Tesla. We did puts in Tesla. We did puts in Tesla before the earnings. We did day trades in Tesla where Tesla was the gap of the last week and it was a short and we will talk about that briefly today. But it's the 26 points that tells me 
where the money's gonna go. Is it gonna drop? Is it gonna go up? Is it gonna continue in the direction of the gap? And again, whether you do as a day trader, whether you do as an option, is 100% up to you. But a lot of people do like options simply because they do not have margin accounts. Now, I do have a margin account, but if you want to do day trades and options, you can. If you want to just do options, you can. If you want to do just do day trades, you can. You can trade options fast, fast meaning one or two days. That's fast for me in an option, okay? We're doing the weekly options, but you can get in and out of an option in 30 minutes if you want, okay? I'm in and out of the day trade sometimes five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Again, trying to trade the first half an hour of the day. But as far as looking at options, I still think weekly options are short. I mean, I could be doing longer term trades, but again, it, you pay up the farther time that you pay out for an option. So sometimes it just doesn't make sense to do something when you have your pain and then it's got to have such a big move so far out. And again, who would have thought? Who would have thought that the year would have turned out the way that it's been so far in the last four months? If you bet on either side of the coin and either side, the market was going to rally or drop. You would have been wrong in both points because the market has been such in such a tight range. So again, if you did say, for example, at the end of de uh, if in December, say you did spy uh, leaps, whether you did calls or whether you did puts, you know, you're probably down in both that you did right now, even if you did long term something out for like 12 months. So this type of market, particularly, I think it's important to focus on the fast moves to book money. Um, someone's writing something there. Uh, what is one book? I can't recommend any book at all about trading. I'm sorry. Again, I, I, you think I didn't look for books to, when I was learning how to trade? No, there's no one book out there that I can tell you that you're going to get what you need. And I haven't written a book and I probably won't because I just don't have time. But if I ever get the time to write a book, you know what I'd write a book about? I'd write a book about something that would have to do with people's mindset. Because after teaching people now for 11 years, I started the stock swoosh 10, going on 11 years ago. Um, this is 11th year here. I, 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 I know what people's problem is, problems are. They don't stick with one thing. If I, if I had to criticize traders and journalists this is a blanket statement of just generalizing here hundred uh, percent, traders don't stick with one thing I have. It's one of the reasons I'm successful. And number two, um, cause you never get good at one thing if you jump around and number two, traders have terrible mindsets about money. So if I ever wrote a book, if I took the time to do it, the most, the best thing that I could offer people of my advice and knowledge and experience of all the years that I've been on this planet alive is all the people I've come in contact with, particularly Manhattan, New York, all my experience in television and everything in trading and teaching adults, because I teach adults, I don't teach children. But the fact is that people's mindset about money is probably what I'd write a book about and that would obviously help you with trading. The reality is that many people don't have a good attitude about money. I'm, I, I could say I'm lucky in the sense that I have a good attitude about money, but it doesn't mean sometimes I don't get frustrated if I have a bad day trading, but I'm very good at turning it around. I'm very good at turning around. Like I talk to myself in my mind where I know what I need to think to get what I need to do. So I keep moving ahead in my own personal life and my professional life and my financial life because I keep setting goals for myself and bars for myself to move forward. And I believe that I can, you know, 10 years ago, if someone said, there's no chance in hell, you're going to get on Fox news, Melissa, no one knows who you are. I would have said fat chance to that. And I did it. So the reality is that if you don't believe in yourself, no one else is going to believe in you. So you start with that. And the second you start with that, then everything that happens to you, some things that you do control and some things that you don't control, you can overcome. But I think so many people, this is a problem also, I don't wanna to get too off track here, but this is a problem, I have a trading room. The trading room's closed off, we can't see other people's chats. Nor most trading rooms are basically garbage chats where people just commiserate again amongst themselves, chatting about, oh, woe is me, we lost to this trader, this thing is that thing, whatever the other. It's just people complaining and commiserating, and that, a lot of that is in Reddit too. Actually, I don't participate in Reddit. I don't go on Reddit. I don't do anything with that at all. Most people will cling to each other and just poison each other with negativity. I'd love to say it's the other way around, that people can bring people up and lift people up, but it tends not to be that way. Human beings, I don't know if this is just the human mind or how it is in general, tend to slide deep down into the mud and go into a negative attitude far easier than they do to get up to a positive attitude. You've got to look out for yourself and you have to look out for yourself and everything you're doing Nobody cares about you but you, and you better get it together if you want to trade and you want to make money in this market. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. I hear this all the time, too. I've taught people that are in their 70s and 80s. And I say, I, I had a guy email me like the last webinar I did. 
He said, I, I, I'm too old to do this. What do you mean? You're too old. He was younger than my father. He was 76. My father's 78. I said, what do you mean? 76 is fine. 76 is young. You're alive. You're not dead. I mean, the, it, the mentality that people have for some reason, and I don't know why, is that after a certain point of life, if you haven't made it, you're never going to make it. That's not true. That's not true. If you if you think like that, then basically every year that it's your birthday, you're, you think you're one step towards death. And that's ridiculous, okay? You're here, you're alive, you're lucky that you're listening to me today. Think about how grateful you should be that you're even listening to my wisdom today for free, by the way, okay? So I just got went off on a tangent there. But the fact is, I can't recommend any books. Let's get back into what we're talking about here in reference to training. You do have to have the basics, but the attitude part of it, if I ever wrote a book, is, is absolutely, absolutely the number one thing and you have to encourage yourself. You have to be your own best friend. You have to be your own best advocate. One of the other benefits I think people get when they come to me is the lecturing I'm talking to you about right now. You know, people get this from me in the room. They get this from me in my classes too as a mentor, okay? Because if you think you can't do it, I'll tell you that you can do it. But you still are the one doing it. You're still the one that has to press the button. You have to press it. And you have to get in. You have to get out, okay? Now let's get back to what we're talking about here. The Golden Gap system is a system that I use, which is a reigning system that follows large institutional money. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. For example, Meta. Meta was a good example. Microsoft was a good example. Amazon earnings are out tonight. I have no idea what they do. They could gap up. They could gap down. I may trade Amazon tomorrow. I may not. I'll know tonight when I see it if it's a good gap or not. I will tell you that. It's out after 4 o'clock. Okay? So I, I'm not in Amazon. I don't know what it's going to do. Okay? But I know that I'm going to watch it. And I know it's going to gap. And I know I'm going to rate it. And then I'm going to know after I rate it if I'm going to do it and how. Okay? So what's could the big money going to do with Amazon, for example? What did the big money do with Tesla? They dumped it, okay? Tesla tanked, fell off a planet. Again, we're going to look at that chart here in a minute. But you've got to have a formula to rate and qualify the gap to get the confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side, and then you play it, okay? So I'm not trading in the pre-market or the post-market. Like, I'm not going to trade Amazon tonight, no matter what it does. I wait, look at that time frame, then make a determination and a prediction what I think it's going to do in the live day in the first half an hour of the day, and then I take it, and then I get in, and then I get out, okay? So gaps are an event, and they create a sense of urgency. Hurry, 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 just like with the banks. Remember, everybody was bracing to take all their money out of the banks, and then even the banks that weren't in danger, people were scrambling to move money around if they had too much money in banks. You think everyone that lives in Manhattan only has $250,000? People don't have bank accounts at 52 banks. You know, there are people that have hundreds of millions of dollars that live right here in the building I'm living in right now. I mean, you you know, you, the banking system cannot collapse. There's a reason that they saved that bank, okay? But the fact is panic is something that once it starts bleeding through the system, creates this level of fear that doesn't go away like that. It doesn't go away by the FDIC just coming in and saving one bank. I mean, you're sort of seeing this now with First Republic. I actually walked by, I never even saw the First Republic. I never knew what it was. I just walked by and said, oh my God, that's First Republic yesterday. The, the FDIC doesn't want to come in and save them. Like they're trying to force the hand of the larger banks to come in and buy the bonds of First Republic. So it's, we live in just this web, okay? This web where everything's interconnected. Companies are interconnected. The banking system's interconnected, okay? You're one single person, individual. You're a wheel and a cog. All you have to do is just go in every day and you'd be happy with $1,000, $2,000, even $5,000 you could take out. It's the amount of money that's in the system is so massive and so huge. And the control that this, these institutions have like it's all you can't even it blows your mind when you think about it, actually, it just blows your mind. So again, go back to you being able to make it you've been able to make money, you've been able to make 20k a month or 100k a month or even whatever that is such a small amount, considering what's in the market and what's going through these companies and corporations that control everything. Okay, so again, you need to be smart and you need to take advantage of that and you can by actively trading. Okay, and again, this is not long term investing. This is in and out chunk it out. You take it, get out, and whether it's in 30 minutes or whether it's in one day for an option, you're in and out like that, okay? Anyways, gap trading is incredibly powerful. It's an event. It's an event. It's an event whether it's up or down, but again, today we're talking about shorts. 
Trading gold and gas is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power and money. And that's how you're going to make it, okay? Surround yourself with like-minded people. Surround yourself with people you want to emulate. If you want to be rich, you better start making some friends that are wealthy too. Stop spending time talking to people that have a negative attitude about money. And it's not hard to find those people right now. Why? Because we're going into a recession probably. We could, we're probably in a recession now. Really, let's be honest. If not, we're going to be in a clear, clear recession by the end of 2023. And everybody knows we're in inflation. So you have plenty of things to complain and whine about if you want to be negative. You're not going to change that, okay? If you have a job and you want to make extra money on the side, trading fast in and out of the morning is a perfect thing to do. Doing options on the side where you're working full time is a perfect thing to do. You can do that while you're at your full time job because you may not get a raise at your job because companies are cutting back, okay? And nobody's gonna tell you, well, all of a sudden we're, there's gonna be this huge discount on things. No, inflation may never go back down to where it was, but the cost of eggs and milk and cheese and steaks and everything we buy at the grocery store may never go back down to where the prices were. Now, oil fluctuates, that's true, but we may, we may not be down to gas prices that we were back before the 2020 election, you know, before COVID for another five years. So at the end of the day, okay, you can make extra money if you don't want to change your lifestyle. But if you want to change your lifestyle and live a less better lifestyle, that's up to you. I'm trying to live a better lifestyle. I certainly don't want to live a less lifestyle. So I mean, the fact is that you can make extra money on the side. And it's all about predicting events beforehand and then taking advantage of it, aka Tesla, which we did here. And I'm going to go over this trade. So I called puts here, the stock gap down, they were up. Then we called some more in here, then it got down. This was a day of earnings that it fell. I didn't have the chart in here from yesterday, but yesterday it really fell off the planet. Broke 160, fell all the way down, broke 155. This was really the short of the week. Um, someone's asking me something. Um, supply and demand. I don't know what you mean by zone trading. I don't know anything about what we're talking about with that. Supply and demand. What do you, what do you mean supply and demand? Like, what's your question? I don't get your question about supply and demand. Detail that out for me. Uh, this was last year's results. So this was last year, but I did two, two, take two weeks off last year I moved. 2022, this is an average risk of $2,800 per trade, $651,079, this is all last year. And I, and I took two weeks off to move. So I'm not doing that this year. I might take a vacation. I might just do a staycation and stay in New York. Because uh, I haven't had much downtime, even the weekends I've had off to actually enjoy where I'm at. I've been going and walks in Central Park probably every day, not today because it rained. But um, I'd like some time to enjoy my new neighborhood. But ultimately, you know, the nice thing, though, about trading is you can grow and get better over time if you trade more and get better. And I think that's the problem with a lot of people. They just struggle to ever get good at one thing because they jump around too much. Uh, getting into the market then today we're rallying. Now, I didn't see where we are right now, but this was where we are this morning. We actually gapped up. So once again, a stock closed here. This was the QQQs. And again, we do do the ATFs. The market gapped up this morning. Why? Because Meta was up. Meta affects the market. Again, Amazon's out tonight. That will affect the market too. So a gap up is where at four o'clock we close at one price and we close at a higher price the next day. A gap down is what? where the market or stock or anything at all closes at four o'clock and at 9 30 in the morning opens at a lower price that's a gap down i tend to focus on gap downs that's why we did tesla we also did the market here on this date too that was the 25th okay now a lot of people want to talk about shorts and want to talk about short squeezes could we have a short squeeze in the market because there are people short yes we could so you can have a short squeeze in the market where you have too many people that are squeezed out of their short positions so and the market could all of a sudden then push higher. Yes, that could happen. That could actually, actually happen. I don't know. I'm not predicting it's going to happen, but I'm telling you that it could. The same way we could push down to the downside and people are long, but a lot of people only want to do shorts when it is a short squeeze. We're looking for shorts every day. There aren't short squeezes every day, okay? But if the market really wants to go, there are people that are short the market that are betting to the downside already. This is a picture again of this morning at 1040 of the QQQs. If we really want to go up, or we really want to rally, or really want to blow through the top. And if the Fed says something next week that all of a sudden makes the market excited, yeah, we could have a short squeeze in this market. And then all the shorts are squeezed out. And then you would want to be what? You want to want to be long. The institutional money will be taking us up. We'll be buying the market. Okay. Uh, let me see if there's any other questions here. 
Salvador, I didn't understand your question. Anyways, it's about proper alignment with big money. Big money controls the market. Big money controls the world. You can see that even in everything that we have going on right now, like I said, with multiple industries. So it is about making good choices. How do you find quality trades? You need a good system. So my system tells you how, what, and when. How do you make money in the market? You got to trade a strategy that's profitable. So for me, it's golden gaps. I'm looking for large momentum. What stocks am I trading? Anything that rates 20 points or more per my 26 point rating system. I trade the gap only in the direction of the gap. I do not do gap fills. When do I trade them? Early in the morning in the open when they set up and tr trigger. So again, I'm in and out quickly. I'm looking to do the same thing pretty much every single solitary day. And that's how you get good at it. That's how you can tell it. There are gaps every day in the market, like Tesla. There was a ton of stuff today, a ridiculous amount of stuff today. Today we did cat. But we could have done five different things. You can do five different things, but I'm trying always to get the fastest trade. Sometimes we're in on a trade in two minutes. Okay, so again, once you get in and out quickly, then you don't have to worry about other things that are going on. So we're gonna look at one week. This was the week of April. Again, I didn't have time to put the past week in, but we made 14,390. This is with a $2,800 risk. This was 410. We made money in Tesla, lost in Snow, lost in Zoom. The 11th, we made money in Amazon. 12th, we did AAL. 13th, we did Infi. And this is unusual, but I did do two trades on this day. C was a long and BA was a short. And we made money in both of those. That was the start of earnings season on the 14th. So this is a this is a good week. This is an average week. We had two losers. People always ask, do you have losers? Yes. The trades in parentheses and the stats and the, and the year to dates and the annual numbers are the losers. So we had two losers this week and we still made good money. Now let's go over every single trade. Um, somebody's asking about something here. If you want a trial, I give trials for a week. Uh, you have to email me at melissathestockswish.com. Um, support and resistance is fine, but that's not a strategy, Salvador. Support and resistance isn't a strategy. It's something that you can use just like anything else that's an indicator you have on your chart, but that's not a strategy, okay? Um, okay. Let's talk about Tesla. So Tesla was 410, take it up, here. Stock close here, gap down. We closed green, but this is actually a tail that we shorted and made money right in here and we got in and out. So we shorted this and we made money, boom. And that was on 410. And then we got in and we got out. And we made 6,100, or you did if you risked 3,000. So short was 179.60, exit was 176.55. This is a daily, Daily chart here, someone's asking. It's a daily chart of Tesla. Then this is snow. We lost in snow on 410. And again, here is snow. Stock close here, gap down, fell. We got stopped in it, it flipped. So I didn't make money in the snow then on that particular day. And Zoom was in the other day that we lost in the Zoom. Here was the 10th, close here, gap down, dropped. We stopped in Zoom. So three trains on that day, but overall, that was the start of the week, that was the Monday. Then we did Amazon on the 11th. Let me find it here. Stock close your gap down, we shorted it, boom. Again, this is a daily chart. We got in and out, 47.50 is a, is a great amount of money, okay? The size was here, was 5,000 shares, and we captured almost a dollar. Again, if you risk a dollar, you're looking to make a dollar. If you risk 50 cents, you're looking to make 50 cents. For 12, we did AAL, this is a little rinky dinker, we didn't make quite 100% on this, close, but again, it went to the target, so I got out. It did keep going. 412 was AAL. Stock closed up here, gap down, fell. So if you held this, you can see it broke 13. So I got out of this really quick in the morning, but it actually would have been a massive trade if you had held it all the way down because we entered it at 1360, and it broke 13. I just didn't hold it all the way down there. Sometimes if I, I say I get out of the trade where I get out in the room, but if you want to hold it longer, you can I mean, you can. Empty then we did on 413, close to your gap down. This was a good one. Again, in and out quick. This kept going where I got out of it too. Again, risk was 29.70, made 27.90, close enough. Close enough. I'm looking for targets. I'm looking for time of the day. I'm looking for what the market's doing. C was a long, like I said, unusual. This also kept going where I got out. Um, I got in and out of this quick because I had made money in the other BA, 1750. Here was the gap. This was a gap up, close to your gapped up, rallied. Here it was. We also did calls and see. We did options and see. And this almost went to 50 on the day, and then it did go to 50. Again, I got out of this quick. I did not hold this either. 
Tesla I held. Tesla, I believe, was lower. Tesla, I did a bunch of trades in. See, I got out fast. It was also Friday. BA, we did here. Close to your gap down, fell. 202.35 was the entry. Again, 200 was the target. Went there, boom, out, done, uh, finish. This kept going, though, too. Again, take your money and run to the bank. This came all the way down. Dropped $2 from where I got out of it. But again, I like the fast trades, and I don't have to worry about anything at all. Um, someone is asking, how am I calculating the risk amount, uh, the difference between the entry and the stop? How much money do you think someone would need to trade the strategy? You need a margin account, which is a minimum of 25,000 at a retail broker, at a prop broker, you could probably open up a margin account with 5,000. You're gonna get 10 to one margin, a retail four to one margin. If you can open up a margin account, if you don't have 25,000 and you don't wanna go prop, then you open up an options account which the minimum in an options account at a retail broker is 2000 and you can open up a cash account. So whether you do day trades, active day trades, or options has to do with the amount of cash that you have. Hope that answers that question. Um, okay. Anyways, it was a good week. So, I mean, I could have put last week, this week, whatever. I told you today we did cat. We didn't do any options today. But, you know, this is one of these things, again, where if your mindset is such that you believe that you can do it, you will do it, you know. And it's not about making money in every trade. You will have some losses, even with me. But it is about making money more than you don't, okay, which you will with me. So the fact is, you have to be consistent. If I didn't lose in any trades, I would essentially risk my whole account all the time, every day, in every trade. I don't do that. You have to have parameters. Look at, again, what happened to the banking institutions. They had parameters. They didn't follow them. Poor management and poor risk money management took down that bank in Silicon Valley. You, I mean, anybody could saw last year what interest rates were doing, how they were moving against bonds for long-term bonds. And, I mean, they ignored it. So, And then when people wanted to take all their money out, then they couldn't. And there was a run in the bank. So it, they took them down. It, you know, people always can say, oh, I need so much money to train. I don't have enough money. I can't do this. I don't have this much money. You'll be waiting forever, okay? You have to build it. Start slow and build it. If you're waiting to, waiting, waiting for what? Waiting for you to win the lottery? Like, seriously, start with what you have now. Stop complaining that you don't have enough. Train with $2,000 and build it up. If that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do, Okay. Everybody has parameters they have to work within, okay? That's what it is. All right, my niece right now, she's uh, she's in New York. She's going to ballet school. I'm her aunt, so, I mean, her parents are, my sister is uh, her mom. And they were telling me she took, she, she has a limit on her debit card that she can take out cash every day. And apparently she took all her money out and she was allowed to take out that one particular day and her parents freaked out. And I was talking to her and I said, I said, Emily, don't you want to, she said, well, it's my money. I said, Emily, you can't spend all your money in one day. If your dad wouldn't have had you cut off at a certain amount, what would you have spent all your money? You have a limitation and she's in school. She doesn't have a job. Everyone has limitations, okay? So complaining about them isn't gonna get you ahead. It isn't gonna get you anywhere, okay? Again, think positive. Think that you're going to get somewhere. Think that you can get somewhere. Be willing to do what it takes to get somewhere. You know, so many people are not willing to do what it takes to get ahead, which sometimes mean sacrifice. Like my classes on a weekend. That means you're not, you know, playing around, watching sports all weekend. You will be sitting in front of the computer. But guess what? It should be fun. You're looking, you're learning how to make money. That should be fun. I mean, you know, you have to make certain sacrifices. Open up a trading account, putting money in it, paying for a class. There's a cost to everything. Sacrifice. Um, somebody's asking me about how much you concentrate on options versus stocks. It's the same strategy. The strategy I do for tra day trades and the strategy I do for options is exactly the same. It's a 26-point rating system. So I get up in the morning, I rate everything I like. And if I decide that I want to do something, I might do it as an option and a day trade. If I decide that I want to do something as a day trade, then I may not do it as an option. Why? Because I don't think it's going to have enough follow through, so I don't do it as an option. 
if I do do something as a day trade and an option, which we did in Tesla, then guess what? I really, 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 really like it. But it's not every trade. Some trades don't make sense as day trades. They do make sense as options. And some trades don't make sense as options or they don't even have any options or they don't have any volume. But as far as what I do, I don't spend any more time on any one other than the other. I spend time in the morning rating the gaps. And then I make a determination if I want to do both an option and a day trade in it or one or the other. So why is the Golden Gap 26-point rating system consistent and reliable? Because of the power money. You've got to trade on the side of power money. It's so important. Institutional money is in charge. I cannot stress this enough. And I also have to stress how you've got to win more than you lose. Except the fact that sometimes you will lose. Nobody likes that. Be in, a, be in a bad mood all day if you have a bad day, but don't blow up your account. But if you're losing, 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 and you've been trading the same strategy or you have no strategy, you're losing for two months, three months, six months, a year. I mean, you'd only you'd have to be crazy to keep trading doing that same thing. Change it. Do something different. You've got to change it up. Again, sometimes something doesn't work and it's not your fault. So then just learn something else. You can make money because the whole idea is making money. That's why you're doing this. And you want to get better over time. And if you're not even doing something that doesn't work, then how are you going to get better over time? So for me, it is my 26 points. It is the checklist. This is what I go through to make the picks every day. I'm looking for a high probability of directional bias that will, that will last the whole day, ideally. You know, like we had that with Tesla. Then I want a big move in the day. Again, Tesla... Early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. We had that the other day in the market. We, I went right after the market on that whatever that was day was two days ago. I think it was the 25th. I, then I said, oh, my God, we're going to fall. Boom. And we did options. Got it. Doom. Got the drop. Fell into the close. Precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. And then, of course, you want good target potential. But... It's the trade selection because so many people just aren't doing the right things and they don't know what to do and then they're flip-flopping and are they trading stuff that doesn't even move? I mean, we don't trade penny stocks. I'm not doing something that costs a dollar. You know, again, don't do stuff that's crazy or it's going to get haunted. Do stuff that's normal companies. You can say, oh, I know. I've heard of Target. I've heard of Walmart. Yes, I've shopped there myself. So then you say, yeah, this has a lot of volume. Things that you know of, all right, that they'll be here today, they'll be here tomorrow. Okay, but the checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock to read it correctly. And it really matters because that's how you're going to make money because you won't make money going long if you're short and vice versa. So what do you need to make trading work? Number one, a system to follow with rules. So my system has rules. If it doesn't meet the 26 point criteria of 20 points or more as a cutoff, then I'm not going to do it. Then I don't take it in the direction of the gap. Then I don't take it at all. And I don't go the reverse. Okay. I don't do the reverse. I follow the rules. Not all gaps are good, though. So I might get up one day and there isn't any good gaps. Guess what? Then I don't do anything. You also need a method and a structure to enter and exit the picks. This was Tesla. This was Tesla from Monday. We did it. It fell off a planet. Here's the short in here. This is a one minute chart. Again, I teach all of the entries in the class. I teach the exits in the class. I call them live in the room. Okay. And then you need goals. And I think you need to be realistic with your goals. So if you, you know, if you have a small account, $100 a day is $500 a week. $500 a week is $2,000 a month. If you're not making $2,000 a month trading, why are you trying to make $100,000, you know, a year trading? So, I mean, $2,000 a month, if you look at it, is twenty-four grand a year. And if you didn't make that last year trading, why are you trying to make like hundred grand this year? Just start with the amount of money you have. If you only have $5,000, you can open up an options account and see if you can make $500 a week. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? And if you can make 24 grand then by the end of the year, that $5,000 account will have almost 30 grand in it. And then boop, all of a sudden you've got a margin account, you can day trade, you can do options, you know, instead of fighting, fighting, fighting with whatever you're working with. You can't be fighting all the time against the market, fighting over it all the time against the rules, fighting, fighting the system. You're, you're not going to win. Okay. So go with the flow. All right. Anyways, number four, I think you need a talented mentor. If you have someone there to help you, to guide you, to give you the motivation and, and help guide you in all of the things that I know, just not the education, the learning. We we're talking today about the, the mentality, the mindset, what you need. 
I do think that helps. It helps in the good days. It helps in the bad days. It helps when you need it. And when you're trying to narrow it down to one or two things, very often I can pick it because I've been doing this a long time and I have a sixth sense for what I'm doing as well. Um, and if we have time here, which we may not, I'll, I'll tell you what I think about Amazon. I'll pull up the chart for tonight since it's coming out, but I, I, I don't know if I'm going to have time because I started a little bit late here from the last person, but we'll see. Anybody's the reliability in the system means sticking with one thing. For me, it's the daily. Daily. I look at it. I rate in the daily. I do your stops. I'm very deliberate in my choices. Education is important. I teach a class once a month. My April class is this weekend. I know that only gives people one day to make a decision or two days, but the class is Saturday and Sunday. If you want to sign up for April, the next class is not for another month in May. But you've got to learn how to train and you should be thinking about what you're doing, you know, to make money. Now, really quickly here, this was Tesla. I just want to show this was a trade I called. And I, I just want to show if you got out here on one particular day, if you held it, I called the 185 Teslas before the earnings. I did not hold it through this earnings, this 185 or the 184s, I mean, or the 185s. I called the 185s on the 18th, okay? So if you held that through the earnings, you could have made 269%. So for example, if you held it, you could have risked $1,300, made 3,500. I'm telling you, I didn't do this. So I chose to get out because the day before I was up, but the fact is that, you know, that was my choice. So on this day, okay, I called the 185s. I called the puts. I was up on this day. I got out of the trade. I'll show you what I did in a minute. It was like 54% return on investment. It wasn't 269. I took the safe out. Okay, I was up. 50% I think is good in, a, in an option. But I want to show you how some, so he, some of these calls I call are really huge. It gapped down here the next day. Here's basically where it opened then on the earnings and and it was over 200%. So this was the trade that I did. I did the 185 puts and I took them on the 18th and I got out of them on the 19th and I made 54%. So I thought that was good. It was money in the bank. But I just wanna show you here, this did continue. And if you held it, you would have really made bank. And one person that I know on the options letter, Muhammad, did hold it. He did. Um, oh, here, here, here's the day. So I called it here. I got out of it here. Muhammad, I know, held it to here, but it was a bigger trade there. Actually, you could have even been in it, you know, even a little bit to the into the next the last day, which is so crazy. Even the last day, which I would never hold it the last day if I'm up, you know, 50%, 100%, whatever. The last day here, you could have even got out of that with a lot. Looking, just looking here, close at 165. Um, what am I saying here? Somebody's question. Do I only call puts and calls? Yes. I'm doing momentum training. I'm buying puts and selling them, and then I'm buying calls and selling them. So if you're interested in the class, again, you can learn what I do. The options newsletter is a separate subscription. There is no prerequisites for that. There is a prerequisite for the live trading room, which you must be a student of the Golden Gap class to be in the room as a member. I often do specials to try to help people to support them to be in the room, but you can just sign up for the newsletter today and you'll get tomorrow's trades. So the Golden Gap course teaches one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power in charts, and that's what I focus on, and it teaches a proficient level and advanced level to read charts. So. I'm just going to skip forward here. It's very, very important, again, for people to understand that education is a big piece of learning what to do. Unless you want to teach yourself or create your own system. I did it, but it took me three years. So it's a lot easier for you to pay me for the class and learn it in a weekend. You will have questions after that. You absolutely will, but I'll be there for you if you do have questions. Here's some testimonials from people. And now here is the class information. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is this weekend, April 29th and 30th, 9 to 5. Class is $69.99. Now, I am doing a special pay half now, half later, which to try to help people. You pay half of the money and you do day two, which is all the entries and the exits. So you can start to trade. You're in the room then for 60 days trading, and then you pay for the rest of the class and you do day one then after the 60 days and then you get the trading room free to the end of the year. Now, if you wanna pay for the class full for $69.99 by tomorrow, you can do the class for the weekend and you get the trading room free to, for, through the end of the year with the class. And the next class is not till May 20th and 21st. 
Um, and then I have a combo, which includes the trends, which is on my, May 2nd. I do have some people signed up for that. That's $74.99. Any questions from anyone here in the last few minutes? I think I'm good with time. Any questions from anyone in the last few minutes? Melissa, I apologize for the interruption, but I'd like uh, you to ask them to email you with questions. Oh, sure. I'm not sure if you uh, were aware, but it's a 45-minute slot. I know I was, but I didn't get on right at noon, so I was. I was trying to get the full 45 in, but I was aware of it. Hey, that. Noah, absolutely, yeah. if you'd like to answer a question or two, but, you know, in the interest of things, I do have to be fair to the next presenter as well. Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Melissa, I want to thank you for the great presentation, and, you know, those numbers are impressive. You have my attention, absolutely, and uh, I'm also...